OCD much? I'm going to have another go at the bindings on the back of this cursed guitar. I've removed the old set, and as I mentioned last time, it is clear that the channels were not cut square. There must have been some lean. I know that because some of the previous sets of bindings remain after I recut the channel. My strategy this time is going to be pretty much the same as last time. Multiple dry fit-ups, uh, checking that the tilt bevels have been adequately uh, filed and sanded. As a last resort, in this problem area here, if I cannot get it right, I will allow this piece to be a little high and I will attempt to fit a little wedge sliver underneath. Uh, the join line will be visible, but not too much of an eyesore, I hope. But of course, I hope even more that I won't need to do that. Unsurprisingly, the uh, non-cutaway side went very, very well. So far, so good, I mean. I haven't levelled yet. Now it's time for the troublesome cutaway side. Uh, as you may be able to see, I've pencilled in all of the areas that I need to file away. After that, I'll give it a dry tape up and see how close I am to the mark. We've got it very good at the waist. We've got it quite good at the horn, but we still have a gap at the cutaway. And I'm not going to be able to file away any more because we've actually come below the line of the sides. Now, I have determined that that gap there is caused by the channels not being perfectly vertical. So I'm going to try and glue it up in this state. And the problem is, when I file that away, I want the placement of the accent layer to be uniformly distant from the edge so that it looks nice. So I'm going to press on and give it a go. After levelling, the thickness of the outer layer, which of course is needed to delineate the accent layer, around the outside is not perfect, but immensely better than my previous attempt, especially in that problem area. So what have I learnt going forward? Now the first thing I'm going to try is to experiment with bindings that are not quite so deep. These are a little over 9 millimetres. I'm going to try 7 millimetres because the taller they are, when they tilt, the wider the gap. The second thing of course is that when I cut the binding channels I have to make sure that the guitar is absolutely secure and straight in the cradle. That will give us perfectly vertical channels. And our problems here were caused by tilting. Next, thinner inner layers can form much more easily and give us the ability to have nice accented colours that mimic purfling uh, to a small extent. And uh, of course, I've had ample experience on the multiple tries getting this one right in sanding the tilt bevels here, 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 here and here. Here. So that's obviously going to be needed. And finally, at least one, possibly two, dry tape ups to make sure that it's absolutely perfect before we proceed with the glue up. This guitar is far from perfect. Um, the uh, relative thickness of the accent layers on the top are not ideal. But I look forward to my next build and hopefully 
this nightmare can be put to bed for good.